Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Fan Investor Podcast. I'm your host, Sunny Burns. And I'm your co host, Sun Marie Burns. And today we have exciting news. We have finished our kitchen. Yay! Yay! We started this project three months ago. So it's uh it's it's a real joy. Yeah, an so exhaustion just, of joy. Just to give you the framework, we decided a few months back to DIY our own kitchen all by ourselves. And it wasn't just a simple DIY like we tore down we fresh walls. the cabinets. No. Yeah, we tore down walls, we gutted the place, we rebuilt walls, and we built the kitchen from the grounds up basically yeah so it was quite an elaborate project quite the learning curve it was not our first kitchen renovation eighth kitchen it's the eighth kitchen that we have renovated but we have contracted a lot of those out in the past right or semi-contracted certain parts of the projects and they were small kitchens this is a big kitchen yeah probably our biggest definitely our biggest yeah uh it was a small kitchen uh, but then we took away two of the walls um, and, and made it a big kitchen. <laughs> it's now a big kitchen. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully I can put some pictures in. So if you guys are viewing on YouTube, I'll have some pictures uh, sh- to show you guys kind of the progress. It's hard to do before and afters because the, the, the walls that had been there really enclosed it. But uh, I think you'll get the idea of, of the transformation. Right. But it's been quite an adventure. And we just wanted to share a little bit about what it was like to do a live-in kitchen renovation where you know we lived at the house and we were working on the project every night every day every free moment and how it went three kids running around it's challenging how it went and what our timeline was and the different challenges we came up against and the solutions we came up with right yeah i think one day this week we're up till 2 a.m kind of finishing up the backsplash so there was a lot of nights like that Right. and uh yeah but we got it done you know and in, in three months more like two months because a month of that was vacation but um you know that's better than some friends of ours that we know it's been countless years and they're still <laughs> working on their kitchen renovation so we got it done I, i'm proud of us it, the it, the end product looks awesome yes so i think that's what we're talking about today we were thinking about talking about we just got back from a 14 day or 17 day back or camping adventure around the grand circle in utah and uh but that might be for next episode yeah (laughs) so without further ado let's get to the show you're listening to the famvestor podcast if you're looking to raise your family with intention gain financial independence and live a life of true freedom you're in the right place join us as we explore together how to create thriving families because strong families are the cornerstone for a world at peace So phase one of our kitchen remodel is emptying the kitchen. So we worked all day today doing that, and voila, our kitchen is now empty and ready for us to start demo day tomorrow. We'll be ripping out these cabinets. Tonight we're gonna be moving the appliances out of here to give us more space, and then we'll rip out the cabinets, knock down this wall, knock down this wall, knock down that wall, and really open this space up. We'll be hanging um, painter's tarps all along here to keep down the dust levels as we work. So this will be blocked off, and that will be blocked off. Happy kids. Okay, so here is our finished kitchen. Got the bar stools, got the island. Got the cabinets in, got the backsplash, got the recessed lighting, appliances, window, dining room, pendant lights. So this is it. After three months, we are finished. There we are. Looks pretty good, right? What do you think, Kaylee? Looks pretty good? Yeah, there it is. There she is. There's the island cabinets. Oh, are you giving me the hungry sign? You hungry? So, um, as we said earlier, this is not our first kitchen renovation. We've done multiple ones throughout the rental properties that we own. 
And because of that, it's given us the confidence and comfort to feel like, all right, we're familiar enough with the process to tackle such a project. I think for a lot of people, the idea of just, you know, renovating anything in your house, but your kitchen especially, can be a very daunting thought, very intimidating, because you don't really know what goes into it. But um, with our experience, we felt fairly confident that we could handle taking on this job. But I think even it's been a few years since we did it ourselves. And I feel like we kind of went into it a little foolhardy mm-hmm. thing. And, oh, yeah, we know what we're doing. We'll knock this out in three weeks. I, I mean, that was our original goal, right? Like three it, weeks. It was three weeks. We were going to have it all done. And it turned out to be three months. Truthfully, two months of work and one month of, of vacation time mixed in there. But, um, yeah, so, so we... Decided we wanted to do that. We knew from the get-go when we moved into the house that the kitchen was the one thing we weren't totally satisfied with. We wanted to redo it at some point. We didn't think we were going to do it right away, um, but I was on the lookout for bargain cabinets, which is one of my favorite hobbies to do. This is probably our (laughs) eighth bargain cap. We've always bought used cabinets. We've never bought new. Yeah, we, we love buying used cabinets you get them for a steal of a deal and a lot of times they have a lot of life left in them and you you know have been gently used right so you know we weren't really proactively pursuing this project until i perused our local habitat for humanity restore just one day on a whim i'm like let me walk in there and see if they have cabinets and they had the set of cabinets and it was the right price and it was 25% off that day on all cabinets and furniture. So white shaker cabinets, like 20 mm-hmm. of them? 21. 21, 21 cabinets them. for... 14.50. It turned out to be 14.50 with the sale. And they were very gently used, if that. My suspicion is they were a builder set that was installed in a... A home renovation and the new buyers probably didn't feel it fit their taste and had them pull out and put in a brand new kitchen of their liking and so these kitchens these cabinets were in really good condition yeah higher end too had the soft clothes and all that so it was a good good condition i mean i'd say that set probably brand new is probably like seven thousand yeah at least that probably um and there were so many of them 21 of them you know yeah usually uh yeah, usually it's a lot for those kind of cabinets because that's the style that's kind of in right now, the white shaker. So needless to say, when I found that, I was like, all right, we got to buy these today because this deal isn't going to come up tomorrow. And so that was the catalyst for us to start this project. We bought them. They filled up our garage. And of course, Sunny is like, oh, I can't have my garage full of cabinets. That means we have to start this renovation next week. I think that weekend we had demo day. We called some friends, some yeah. family, uh, gave them a sledgehammer, and we had at it. Truthfully, I just wanted to have the cabinets in our basement for months until we finally got around to it. But that's not how it works with, with you. <laughs> yeah, we did get a dumpster. We never have dumpsters, and it's always such a pain. So we got a dumpster. Yeah. Balin was very excited. He drew a, a he colored it in a, in Sat a sketchbook. Sat out on the front lawn and just sketched the beautiful dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so that so then yeah, we demoed the whole thing in about a day. So that went pretty well. We had like eight people, fed them all pizza. It was it was good. We did prepare beforehand by packing all our stuff it's almost like a mini move because when you're going to do a project like this you have to unload your kitchen dismantle all of it yeah and it is worthwhile to properly label your boxes with all your dishes and food items and whatnot so that as you're living through the renovation you can find the things you need as you go Um, we we were pretty meticulous about that that was certainly really helpful to us because, you know, there's 15 boxes worth of stuff. Right. And y- you inevitably are going to need them. It, it doesn't, right. you know, it's You're not cooking. a short-term project. Right. We left the, the stove, the range plugged in the whole time. The gas connected to the gas line. Am- amongst all the demolition, we still have that stove always uh, plugged in so we can <laughs> cook for ourselves. But we're like, where's the can opener? Where's the spatula? You know, you need to right. have access to a lot of those things. Refrigerator also, we, we left that mm-hmm. untouched too. So the fridge and the stove remained intact throughout the whole renovation, right. which allowed us to kind of keep 
some level of comfort throughout the project. You know, we have had friends who have gone without a stove or refrigerator for a certain amount of time. And it's just such a huge trouble, you right. know, to feel like every single meal, even the little meals, like a quick breakfast or a light lunch has to be eaten out, you know. So we we planned right. the importance of keeping our stove running. And, it and we just covered does. it with a tarp when, you know, there was demolition dust and things like that. Yeah. Um, so that, that kept the dust down. But to, to talk about the, the setup for Demolition Day, um, since it was a live-in renovation and we have kind of an open concept house, there was living room space, hallway space, and a hallway up to the bedrooms that it was very important to us to make sure the construction dust doesn't reach those areas for additional work and mess and headache. So what we came up with was we hung huge um like 12 by 12 painters tarps from the ceilings along the walls and basically encapsulated the whole kitchen space mm -hmm. so that the majority of the dust was contained within the plastic room that we created um and allowed us to keep it out of the living space like the living room where right. we would hang out and the kids would play while we were doing work and we covered the floor with some like thicker, what do they call it, ram board or something. It's like a thicker paper that you can cover your floor with to uh, protect it from dings and stuff. We did still manage to crack a piece of our tile, which <laughs> the tile floor we were leaving. Yeah, um, it was one of the few things we wanted to keep from right. the original kitchen. Yeah, and even when we tore down the, the two walls, um, you know, kind of left a gap in the floor. But we were able to cover that with some custom trim uh, that we ordered from the local mill. Uh, that was a pretty penny. I was like four hundred fifty dollars for all that trim work, but it was like twenty six feet of this four and a half inch wide, five and a half, five and a half inch. So pretty custom. You couldn't find it. Yeah, uh, we, it turned we out could, looking really good. We could find a five inch. We couldn't find a five and a half inch. Yeah. So we had to pay the top dollar for it. Right, but that covered all the holes where the wall had been, so it was important to have that. Right, right. I mean, there were a bunch of things we could have done. We could have, you know tried to add to the flooring we have oak flooring but it would have looked patchy we could have redone it but that would have been a fortune um we could have tiled it we did consider doing that and just adding like a tile trim around the tile the main tile floor but we thought that would look funky we couldn't find a trim that looked appropriate All right so we went with um a beveled wooden transition piece of a specific size and actually it turned out really good it looks original to the floor mm -hmm. um but yeah so that's how we set it up hung up all the tarps all the plastic moved everything out of the way so that we didn't have extra cleaning and brought in a team of uh four friends five friends yeah friends and family and we just tore down the walls pulled out the cabinets took everything apart and gave ourselves a nice clear space to work with. Um, and it's really interesting when you get through that process, you realize, oh, there's actually a lot more here that I need to think about. Right. Patching the, the ceiling that we just took the walls out from. Um, there's electrical in that wall. How are we going to reroute that or get rid of it? Um, um, there's HVAC in that wall because we have a uh, central air. So there was vents in that wall. So we had to think about how we we're going to do that. We ended up, you know, making a floor vent. And then we, when we thought about, oh, wait, but where are we going to put the new cabinets, you know, where they hadn't been before? There was also a vent. So we had to vent underneath the baseboard of that cabinet and out. And so that was a whole project, too. A lot of the delays that we encountered in the renovation came from hitting these little speed bumps and realizing, oh, we didn't think about that. Now we have to go back. To the drawing board and research it you know well, what do you do with a vent if there's a cabinet right in front of it you know how do you re rework that so it was quite a learning process for that sort of thing we hadn't dealt with that in the past mm -hmm. our other kitchens were radiated heat yeah so that's radiators. a lot more simple you just avoid the radiator mm -hmm. <laughs> um but yeah and we also replaced a window 
right which was more challenging because we've never done one of those so that was a learning experience in itself Mm -hmm. um yeah we took down the window during the middle of demo day because there were people not doing anything we're like oh yeah just just take down the the window window, because it was cracked and broken so it needed to replace and we bought the window used too at the habitat for humanity restore for like 60 bucks and we thought it was a perfect fit but it was off by like half an inch (laughs) or something so we had this huge gaping hole in and it. we're like oh shoot and it was still like was, march at this yeah, point so it was like, cold it's gonna snow in a couple of days and <laughs> we have a hole in our house now <laughs> so in the interim i like covered it with like cardboard and duct tape <laughs> but that didn't work so well because it was a big window but we um, did have to adjust the framing to accommodate the the half inch discrepancy right. of the window yeah so we had to yeah we had, we had to do late into that night um patch that window and do what we do all the framing yeah right so that was definitely a challenge that i was worried we weren't gonna figure out right um but you you did it you did it we did it yeah we moved the sink too so we had to move all the hot and cold water supply lines and the drainage too we had to move so that was that was trick too yeah um but luckily it's a you know as most kitchens are on the first floor so you can work from the basement with the piping um unlike a second floor where there's other finished ceilings you got to work around so one major thing that has to be thought about in a kitchen renovation is the layout of the cabinets a lot of times when you're having professionals doing this they take care of it for you and they use online software to to you know lay out the cabinets. we use online software too lowes.com has a good kitchen layout tool so we were using that to kind, kind of, of visualize, helps you visualize it. whether the idea you have in your head will work realistically in the dimensions you have um, but it, it, it is not just figuring out what you want your kitchen to look like, but also if you do buy a used set of cabinets, figuring out how to make those cabinets work specifically to your space. Right. Cause that's always tricky. We actually ended up having to buy two extra cabinets. White shaker is pretty popular. So we were able to find similar looking ones. Yeah. Also used, but, um, we had to have two additional ones to our set. Right. And I think we ended up with five extra ones that will probably sell off uh, at some point right um but what you end up doing is measuring out all the cabinets and then doing a lot of math like all right this is a 183 inch spread and i have a 24 inch cabinet an 18 inch an 18 inch 30 inch you know how am i going to put that in there and is it going to end where i want it to end um which is the tricky thing you know or do i have to consider getting perhaps a smaller cabinet to add to my set and is the dishwasher gonna end where you know the drain is and where the water hookup is and right and do i like where the dishwasher is going to be in the con- you know the concept of where the fridge is and where the stove is we ended up relocating our sink because where it had originally been would have looked very awkward wedged right between the stove and the and the refrigerator with like just enough space to the sink not a very practical layout so we right. had to make that design switch and and, and, we, and we need to make sure the stove didn't go under like a window or something like that because we wanted a over the range microwave mm-hmm. right um not to mention grease splashing onto a glass window which i don't think would be fun <laughs> um so a lot of thought has to go into that i usually do a drawing um a rough sketch of the cabinet layout with the lowers and the uppers i break it out and i do my measuring it takes a decent chunk of time usually there's a lot of thought that goes into that a few days of brainstorming and once i finally you know have grappled with it and have found the exact formula in which these cabinets are going to work for this space what i do is i go in the kitchen with painter's tape and i physically measure out every single cabinet and map it out on the floor with the tape so that you can get a sense of where they're going and what they're going to look like and the footprint and then you we're putting in we put in an island too so we wanted to make sure that the gap between the the wall cabinets and the island cabinets we could walk through comfortably and that that footprint of the tape kind of allowed us to visualize that especially since there hadn't been one there before so we really didn't have a good idea of you know how big it should be so figuring out okay do we want an eight inch overhang or a 10 inch overhang um, for the stools or do we have to keep it more narrow so laying it out with masking tape is a tremendous help throughout the whole project to just conceptualize it it's also a great 
you know, double check to make sure that whatever you had on paper actually does work in the physical space. Also in terms of where like your outlets are and your plumbing is, you know, we had a few of those issues come up where we thought we had a nice layout and then when we laid the tape marks on the floor, oh gee, this cabinet and this vent falls straight between two cabinets. We can't cut through two cabinets. So what are we gonna do here? So a little bit of uh, juggling and shifting, kind of like Tetris, it feels like, mm -hmm. to find a way to make it work just right. But it did, and it always does. You know, this is something that we always do in all of our kitchen renovations. We don't outsource the layout. We always set it up ourselves. Right. We made one huge mistake with the corner cabinet this time. Yeah. Um, what was wrong with it? It was The like... one that we bought was like a custom-built one for perhaps a, maybe there had been a chimney behind it. So it was only it was only 24 by 24 and it needs to be 30 by 30. 36 by 36. Right. So it had completely thrown off all our measurements. Everything was like off and we were well into renovations mm -hmm. at that point so electrical was all where it needed to be and the plumbing was all where it needed to be and then we we're like uh oh this, this is cabinet different doesn't fit and i mean now the, what the simplest thing to do would have been to go to home depot and buy a white shaker corner cabinet but that would have been like 500 bucks right at least that because that's a really big cabinet it's an integral one those don't go for cheap <laughs> and right. they're also really hard to find randomly on you know used platforms right so we ended up deconstructing one of the cabinets and making our own shelving and making our own corner cabinet which is actually a really good corner cabinet now yeah um, maybe even more functional than um yeah a store-bought one would have been and we used a door so it was pretty simple it still took time but it was pretty simple and looks great now yeah. but uh yeah you run into things like that when you Sometimes when you're you doing it on the cheap build your own cabinet yeah <laughs> um but it turned out good mm -hmm. so we lay it all out and then once we've done that you know lighting comes in we have to start putting in our lighting well all the electrical really um outlets you know and... with kitchens to code every 48 inches of countertop must have an outlet and when you're dealing with older homes those weren't the codes probably when the original kitchen was built. Maybe there's one here and another one eight feet from here. Um, so we had to add several of those and make sure it was all to code and to right. spec. We had to add power lines too to, from the circuit breaker box to um, so that they weren't all in the same circuit either. So that was, uh, that was fun routing through the house, all that electrical. So for the electrical work, we did choose to bring in our... Um, contractor yeah he helped us out with that um, and you were working side by side with him but he was overseeing the electrical work because that's definitely something you don't want to mess up you know it's a pretty important that you get it right right <laughs> and it can be very tricky there's a lot of things that can go wrong there so that's something that we said you know what it is worth spending the money here and having our contractor come in and we'll do it with him so that we are still doing it and we are still learning the process, but we have an experienced person who knows what they're doing right. overseeing it. And we also uh, wired up the ceiling lights because uh, we put recessed lightings all throughout um, and three-way switches and stuff. So um, And the kitchen originally didn't have much lighting. It had two lights in right. the whole space. So we were adding... 12 lights 12 can lights yeah, yeah. and three sconces yep so we added quite a bit of lighting in there yeah. um but the recessed lighting these days is really simple um all you really do is need like a hole saw to go through the drywall so we had like a four inch six inch hole saw and popped popped holes in and then they're so they're so small and so lightweight that you don't really need to screw them into anything and they can go in between like the joists even and the drywall so you just kind of pop them up in there and run your electrical and so it wasn't too bad but still takes time but you still had to run all the electrical for all mm -hmm. those lights which mm -hmm. hadn't been there prior and that was a headache honestly <laughs> we didn't really think that through so much beforehand we're just like yeah we want 12 can lights here 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 and there and then we realized oh my gosh this is a lot of electrical work i mean i think it was two days straight you and he were working mm -hmm. on the electrical and I remember thinking, why is this taking so long? Well, there was like 10 outlets, <laughs> you know, like 
yeah 12 can lights and uh, yeah it just takes time each one it does take a lot of time it looks great now though yeah um but that was a lot of work and that was definitely something that you know i think it's well worth it to get someone in there who has some experience mm -hmm. you know with, who is uh, an electrician right so after all that was done then we started putting up uh the drywall right yep started putting up all the drywall uh patching the ceiling which was a pain since it was like just a thin you know wall sized area that we had to we had to put up and all the wall after that was done you know there's a couple days of spackling and then more dust everywhere so you know constantly sweeping and mopping so that we could you know go from upstairs to downstairs and not trek plaster dust. dust everywhere that's like the worst part of any mm -hmm. renovation is spackle <laughs> yeah it's just so hard to contain and then mop up and yeah, we have to do like two desk. moppings each time. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you got to do more than one sanding. So it's like taking multiple days. You're still trying to cook and clean <laughs> and do your other household stuff. So you're always cleaning, making mess, cleaning, making mess. Um, and then we have to, you know, after the drywall is all done, which took a couple days, we have to paint the whole thing. Um, so a couple of coats, both the ceiling and the walls. So those Primer are late first, nights too. Especially where there was fresh drywall, yeah. priming that can't paint with the kids because i think kaylee ended up stepping in the paint at one point and then stepping her painted foot all over the place <laughs> yeah it's best to do those kind of things after the kids have gone to bed 1 a.m <laughs> nights yep um and then uh after painting i think we were ready to start putting in the cabinets actually screwing them in level leveling screwing um which you think goes fast but it takes a long time you know you got to shimmy them up make sure they're level uh you gotta screw them together to make sure they're tight and uh and honestly speaking i think that that's something inexperienced people who are thinking to do a kitchen don't even think about that you have to level cabinets right you think just plug and play yeah right, you put them up against wall you lay screw them down in. there that'll be fine but a lot of times especially in older homes the floors are not level the walls are not level something is off something's bulging and there's gaps and you know it's really important that your cabinets are all at a level height you know so you have to put shims underneath the bases or behind them in order for them to hang just right otherwise if they're on a slanted wall you know the doors are always going to fall open if you don't level it properly you yeah. know and if you're going to lay a countertop on top of it you can't have little discrepancies you can't even have a bowing in the cabinets because the stone would crack on top of it right. i took videos of the whole kitchen renovation so i want plan to put that together at some point uh probably after our grand circle video so keep an eye out, you know, subscribe on our YouTube channel, FanVester, youtube.com slash FanVester, and uh, you can see that whole process and get an idea of the scope and what you had to prepare for if you want to tackle something like this. Right. So after um, shimming and leveling the cabinets, it was time to... Order the countertops. countertops. We decided to go to granite. You know, we were debating granite, quartz... We ended up with granite. I think it was slightly cheaper, and we're just used to granite. We're used to it. We like the natural stone look and the variation of It's more heat color. resistant, too, I think, than right. quartz. It won't show discoloration as easily. Yeah, but I think we just liked the look. That was the main reason yeah. we went with granite. And we, we found a place that was $35 too. a square foot to install it. Yeah, I mean, we shopped around. You know, that's something, too, if you're going to do granite, we like to go straight to fabricators versus showrooms because showrooms always have a upsell price. Fifty dollars a square foot. Because they're a third party, you know, like, oh sure, come choose my stone. I have a guy who cuts it. Well, you're paying for the middleman there. So, I mean, it's not a fun thing, but you know, we were driving around. We went to like four Patterson different and fabricators Clifton and all these um, industrial towns in in our area, visiting fabricators and negotiating with them and seeing what they had to offer. Um, a lot of them were offering the same stone is sold in different levels of, I guess, desirability. I wouldn't call it quality because it's all quality, but it's desirability. Certain ones are like tier one or level A, tier two or level B, tier three or level C, and those. Um, determine the prices so they have like a base price for the entry level and then so forth however more luxurious you want to go with your stone choice so we would talk to each of them go in there say okay well what can you offer me this is my price point this is what I'm looking for this is what I've had in the past it certainly helped 
that this wasn't the first time we've done this. Again, our eighth kitchen. Um, so negotiating is like, well, I know that I can get it for this price, but what options do you give? Right. Do you, uh, does it come with a free kitchen sink install? Do you install it? Um, what is the, you know, turnaround time? Right. We ended up having Delivery to wait. Delivery fees. A week, two weeks. Mm. Actually, they would have had it ready a week. You know, originally it said two week lead time, but then they called us like, "Can we install in a week?" And we're like, "Oh, sorry, we're in Florida. Can you wait?" <laughs> and so we ended up waiting the two weeks anyway. But uh, yeah. Right. So we found a fabricator that had a stone that we liked. It was one that we've worked with in the past, actually, and uh, they provide us really quality service and professional install at a price that we were happy with. All right. So once the countertops were installed, then we started worrying about the appliances. You know, the 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 refrigerator was kind of already already there. The stove was kind of already there. Uh, we had to install a new over-the-range microwave since that didn't previously exist. We had to install a new dishwasher because we the old one wasn't so good and we had moved in anyway. Um, so we put those in. And then it was time for the backsplash, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so then we, uh, the backsplash was hard. We went to Floor and Decor, a local um, tile shop. Didn't like anything they had. <laughs> then we went to Lowe's and Home Depot. Home Depot, we didn't like what they had, but Lowe's had a good selection of uh, backsplashes. So we ended up uh, buying yeah, about 30, 20. <laughs> 20 different types, something like that. Uh, and then settling on two that we really liked. And we were debating about that for like three weeks because yeah, we went on a trip. samples <laughs> that we were trying to decide be between and we eliminated it to two and had the hardest time deciding we were asking friends and family what do you vote for right and then finally just picked one that happened to be the one most people had told us they liked anyway but one was a glass tile and one was a porcelain tile and what ultimately came down to our decision was we are more experienced with porcelain as well as the fact that it's less likely to chip it's easier to keep clean you don't have to worry about scratching it as badly with time. It doesn't show dirt as easily. So for all those reasons, we decided um, it's also more timeless. So we decided we're going to go with a porcelain tile. And uh, I'm happy we did it. It's a really good fit. gives a fresh, modern look to the space. Not over-the-top modern and glamorous, but it is you know, really fitting for, yeah. for our kitchen. You think backsplash is easy, but that took a number of days to do the backsplash because, you know, you have to get the adhesive, put it on the wall, put in your, your tile, and Make then, sure you know, proper spacing, proper spacing. You got to cut around all the outlets. You got to cut around all the corners. You know, maybe the it it's, stops that maybe you don't go like a full eight tiles or um, up. You do seven you and do, a half, so right. you got to cut them all. And then once that's in, then you got to grout the whole thing. Um, so you put grout in between the Two whole tile. Two days after it dries, the right. adhesive dries. Yeah, then and then grout. you grout it. And then you got to wait for the grout to wait um, to, to dry, dry for three days. Well, yeah, you put the grout in, then you got to wash the grout, you got to clean the grout, remove the hazing, and then wait three days. And then you got to seal the grout, which we did, Sun Marie did today. And that was pretty much it. Then we, you know, just put on the outlet covers and we were done. Right. Simple. Yeah. <laughs> Simple job, but not a three-week job. <laughs> right. So definitely just, uh, I don't know, hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of everything you have to consider when undertaking something like that. You know, it's not just, oh, yeah, we want to do the kitchen. Get a few cabinets. Just unscrew the old ones and screw in the new ones and done. I mean, you could do that if you buy the exact same configuration. You don't um, change anything from what you currently have right and you know perhaps you can upgrade your countertops too i mean that is simple that's a simpler way to do it you're still gonna have to shim them and level them but yeah. it would make your renovation a whole lot simpler than ours was yeah yeah we definitely i mean we were kind of living without a sink for a while we were doing all of our dishes <laughs> in the downstairs kind of vanity sink, um, sink yeah. which wasn't pleasant so we actually <laughs> went through a lot of paper plates um, that did help a lot it did. when you don't have a great way to get them washed to just you know i don't like you know using up trees and paper but sometimes it's definitely needed and that doing a renovation like this that was a huge help as well yeah. as we had um disposable cutlery like forks and spoons that mm -hmm. helped too yep um but yeah a lot of things to think about if you're thinking about a project um 
we worked pretty focused day after day after day after day. It was kind of our, that's it. That's what we did with our life. So it's not like we took three months and we took our time with it. We were very focused, very um, driven. We put hours and hours in each day, um, usually in the evening hours, to do these projects. So if you are going to think about it, you know, make sure you have the time to give to it, the energy, the, the experts to fall back on if you come across something that you didn't expect and you don't know how YouTube. to deal with. Yep, be resourceful. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's definitely doable, but prepare for a long, a long project. Right. So I think we spent, we were talking about this before, maybe between seven and 8,000 when all is said and done, I want to I want to do a calculation. I am going to make a video, kind of completely showing. I mean, the of whole that thing. number, um, seventeen fifty went to the cabinets, and twenty three hundred was the countertop. So you put that into your configuration. Um, was that's about four thousand there? So then it was about another three or four thousand worth of other Paint, materials, backsplash tools window everything wiring, else wiring lights as well as the electrician contracting right even the wire the wire itself is pretty pricey i think right. we use probably like 300 400 feet of wire and you know 200 feet usually costs around like 80 bucks right and and you know we we realized doing this um probably we spent a third of what we would have spent if we had hired it out i think perhaps even much more we would have spent you know i think think this probably would have been like a thirty thousand dollar job yeah probably especially with all the add-ins you know the the reconfiguration of the space and the lighting and the window and the island you know it was a big job wasn't a simple kitchen renovation so you can save a lot of money by doing it yourself for sure um but there's a lot that goes with it too (laughs) a lot of labor a lot of hours afterwards we're like hmm do we want to do this again (laughs) (laughs) i don't think so i don't think so yeah it gives you a lot of respect for contractors and the work they do (laughs) it's a it's a good end product though yeah definitely check out the show notes i'll be putting pictures there too so um yeah we hope you enjoyed that we hope it inspired you even (laughs) if you don't tackle something as grand as a kitchen um you know, you can else. do these projects. You don't have to always rely on others to do these these upgrades. Um, a lot of them can be done yourself, but you have to be prepared for the the little things that arise as you do these projects. Right. And yeah, I think that's our show. Yeah. We'll close it out. Yeah. Let us know if you feel inspired after listening to this to redo your own kitchen or <laughs> not. <laughs> um, but yeah, we hope you gained something, at least a better, more realistic understanding of what goes into such a thing and how you live through it. Um, our, by the way, our kids were real champs. They, they were good listeners. They helped us even with certain things that they were capable of helping us with. And, uh, and it, it wasn't that impossible to do, having kids. Um, but it also probably took us longer with kids because we had to do it in the evening hours yep and with that we wish you guys the best of luck godspeed